Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Guido Bernardinelli with La Marzocco Espresso Machines, and I'm very pleased to be here today to talk to you about cultivating brand loyalty. Uh, but before I get into the subject, I would like to thank Allegra for putting together such an incredible event uh, with his incredibly high quality people and networking platform that I hope it's going to be evolving to something really big that can home the European coffee industry because I think you guys are off to, on a good foot, so to speak. Thank you very much. Um, for an espresso machine manufacturer, talking about branding and not having that exposure with the consumer, like most companies in this room have, it's kind of awkward if you think about it because we're one step behind. We really manufacture the machines that goes through the roasters or distributor resellers to coffee shops, eventually being seen by, by the consumer who is certainly more interested in getting a great cup of coffee. So I have to be honest and admit that all this brand recognition that we have, it's unintentional, undeserved, but it's something that we have, and it's something that we have spent a hell of a lot of energy to research and study, try to understand how we can leverage that privilege and luck that has uh, blessed our company. So I'm going to try to explain it real quickly. Actually, I'm going to put a timer on so that I'm not going to go over time because I know you guys care so much. Um, I will try to explain... Uh, in, 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 in a few words, what we feel is, has happened within our little niche company. And in order to do that, I'm going to give you two little examples. One is an example on a micro, uh, on, a, on, a, on a larger scope, and one is the example of our company so that you can understand uh, who we are uh, and what is the essence of our little artisan company. The first example is a very obvious one. It's about Apple. If you had met an Apple fan or fanatic, you would have known what cultivating brand loyalty means. Apple fanatics are taking the values of the company to an extreme level, to a point that you'd see uh, even some of them having the company logo tattooed on their skin. Now, I'm not going to debate around tattoos and the whole culture behind here, but I would like to say that if you have a tattooed brand of a company on your skin that lasts forever, you pretty much made a big commitment to loyalty for that one company. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? So for, for us, cultivating brand loyalty is an example like that. It's something that goes beyond branding and marketing. It's something that goes with the values that the company has, which now, now which companies such, Apple, such as Apple have been able to communicate straight all the way to the consumer. In our case, uh, which is obviously not even comparable with Apple, and we don't have that presumptuousness here to come and, and, and try to make a, even a comparison, but we certainly have our challenges. If you think about La Marzocco is a such small company, and I'm going to show you in a video so that you can have a little bit of a better understanding of of who we really are, making machine by hands one by one in Florence, and we're very much rooted with the Italian, Italian culture and the history and the heritage of the country and the company. But we have these fanatics, which are a minority, and we leverage a minority to influence a majority, hopefully one day, scattered through the world. We have people enjoying our brands and our machines and our products, whether they are baristas, roasters, resellers, chefs all over the world. So it is very complicated for us to cultivate brand loyalty for such a small company that needs to communicate around the world. And I'm going to try to explain you through the course of my presentation how we believe we are not doing it, but we're striving to do it. And we're trying to do it. And in a certain area, I believe we have been even a bit successful about it.
you enjoyed our little video here and you have a you have an understanding here we have Starbucks in the room Mac Cafe Costa Coffee great great company that really put coffee on the map for all of us and open up the market but we are not in the category when it comes to espresso machines and I think it's a value I think this is what we do this, this gives us an opportunity to communicate our values to the customer, hopefully one day all the way to the consumers, uh, not just the, the users of the machine, and gives us an opportunity to be authentic, be true artisans, and do things in a way that are very difficult to be, to be doing otherwise if you had to run a larger organization. So we can still produce artisanally machines, one by one, and work hardly and tirelessly to actually make, try to help baristas around the world to make that one cup of coffee so memorable. Um, in order to cultivate a brand loyalty uh, that is so important today, we first of all had to define all this because it's easy to say, okay, you guys have watched a video now and some of you know the factory have been there or using our machines for a long time now, but but most people, they just don't know. They hear a brand, they hear, a, they hear everybody tells a good story, and ours is such a different story, so it's very difficult to express, especially when you don't have that large of an organization that can communicate out. So we first tried to define our philosophy of true artisans, and it took us a long time, but I'm going to read it to you, or we'll read it together, so that we can furthermore get into what the mood is about our company, and then we can go deeper into our market analysis as far as cultivating brand loyalty is concerned. So we define in our artisan philosophy as a frontier. Um, the frontier is a zone typically touched on by artisans, difficult and dangerous, invisible to the naked eye, and practically inscrutable to market research. The frontier can at best be sensed by using qualities that are rarely accepted by present-day industrial culture. Intuition, sensitivity, and a desire to accept managed risk as an essential part of our work. 
So we believe that this statement identifies exactly what we're doing. We're a global artisan. We moved from being an artisan shop into an artisan organized factory. But we need to use systems and communication paths and organizations as sophisticated as the one of a big multinational company. And that is the challenge that we're trying to understand. And that is why, and that is exactly where our effort comes in, in order to be able to spread the culture and inspire people to make better coffee, also utilizing our machines. So what are our values and the values that we strive to send through the walls of branding to the market are innovation, try to innovate as we remain true to our artisan way of manufacture, but not old in the sense of making old machines because we're artisans. We need to have always be, we need to be always on the edge of innovation and technology and provide new and better solutions to improve the cup. Uh, we have to be responsible for the heritage that we have because when you sell a luxury product, you have to have history. It's very difficult to sell a high quality luxury item if you don't have history. So history is a value and is a responsibility that we have to maintain the history and the culture of the company aligned. At times, we even have refused business because we would not com compromise with our values and, and, and our identity because it's so important for us because if we fail there, then there's so many other bigger companies that can take it over. Uh, and last but very not least, the biggest value for us is people. We really put the people at the center. For us, our employees and workers, artisans, are our first ambassadors. We strive every day, every day, every day we do something to help them leaving the values and believing it and, and, and being exposed out there as our first ambassadors in the market. Because the culture and success we learn the hard way has to come from within. The interaction with the distributors, roasters, resellers, baristas, visitors, owners of the, of the espresso machine so famous that I want to come to Florence and see the factory and have a coffee with the founder is so critical. And if we, and if we compromise those values, we will lose once again. So we work tirelessly to put the people at the center. And, and so this is a bit a little bit of a description of, of what we do and who we are and how we believe in brands. Now, here is a little study that we have conducted um, and, and, and to understand what happened brand-wise and why companies such as Apple are so good at connecting with the customers and not just by in advertising a product or advertising a brand or advertising a feature. Uh, we believe that what happened uh, in the time, first of all, I learned only recently that marketing as a category was not even part, was not even on the map 20 years ago. 15 years ago, marketing became relevant, but marketing was oftentimes confused not just with researching the market or researching the opportunity market has to offer so that a company could develop new products or created a need to then make a product, but it was really advertisement. People confused marketing with advertisement. So a marketing guy would typically make a nice brochure. What that brochure would tell you, or that advertisement or billboard would tell you, would show you a picture of the product, would give you a brand that hopefully would be well received and warm and remembered, like a jingle when it comes to music. Maybe it would tell you the price of the product or the technical features, some of the performances of the technical features. Well, these were not company values. These were just reminders. You could buy my product if you choose so. Or you could actually learn about a product by word to mouth, by talking to people who already had that product, uh, early adapters in many cases, or by, by, by trying the product. But really, you didn't have that exposure to the company values and the transparency and what the company does. It didn't get to to the consumer, and for the most part, it's still like that, in my opinion. And that is why it's, it's difficult for many companies to cultivate loyalty. What is happening in the internet era is that this wall, which is represented by the brand, so the brand becomes something that communicates the availability of the product, 
the name of the product, the name of the company through the logo, but, but also a barrier because the values that companies had stayed within the company and some oftentimes were delegated and mandated by third parties and were not at all available to the customer. Now, with the internet era, all this has lost, it's, it's gone. People, they can connect. We talked about social medias, blogs, internet. People know before a company does a new product. People that really care about your product would find out or can find out or could find out what this product will be all about. So, this entails a lot of responsibility. Now, a company, when makes a product and operates, no matter how big or, or small it is, in an example, I could, tell, I could say, well, uh, leadership is not that one person that climbs the mountain by himself. That is an alpinist. It's not a leader. The leader is somebody who carries the whole group and walks at the slowest pace of, of, of the slowest person in the group all the way up to the mountain. And that is also entails responsibilities. So if you have that kind of leadership, whether, whether you're small or big, then you need to understand that whatever you do is being seen. But it's also an opportunity. We can communicate the values. Think about the Nike example. I'm sure some of you would remember what happened with the Nike shoes, uh, the child children labor issue in Asia in the early 90s. Nike were coming out with these incredible ads telling stories. So they introduced storytelling in the advertisement campaign and not just branding or showing the product. And, and, and they had these incredible productions and put, which gives the brand a big exposure. But when people found out what happened in Asia with the children labor issue, their sales dropped. Why? Because the customer, the consumer, was not associated with the company value or opposite, the company values were not communicated correctly to the end user. When the end user find out, stop buying it. And we have the same thing in coffee. If you think about Rainforest Alliance, direct trade, fair trade, all these associations, they are not necessarily there to grant quality in the cup or in the coffee beans. Actually, I would have a few issues around that, if you ask me, but certainly, they are connecting the values that the customer wants, to, wants to, to know. Today, it's very important for the consumer to know that everything in, in, in the distribution chain, all the way to the farmer that pick up the coffee, is fair. That, that farmer down in uh, Tanzania, he is well taken care of. So, roasters are communicating this through this organization. They are communicating this value to the consumer. And, and, and so this is a reverse example of what happens. So by communicating the company values to the consumer, we, uh, we become truthful to our customer. We don't make up a story. The customer identifies himself with the product they're buying, and the car industry was a great example of that. Wouldn't you think that some personalities or people personalities are also expressed by the type of car they drive? Or, they send, or we all send a message according to what car we drive, or if we buy an electric car, uh, for instance, I don't know that we would just buy that electric car or that person would buy an electric car simply to save on gas. I think he's also sending a message that he's somebody who cares about the environment. He would probably buy neo clothes and have a solar panel up the roof of his house. So now the customer are all human beings and we're all the same, we're all unique. So in, in, our, in our era today, where the customers are connected with the values of the company, they're able on a macro scale, on a ma on a macro scale to express their, their uniquenesses. And so, if Lamarzoko has done something unintentionally, but which, which we now know what it is, has been to communicate exact true values to those baristas around the world who identified themselves with the company. I'm doing here um, with the company. So, um, so these people they become loyal for better or for worse. They are not loyal because they want something, or until they get something in return, they are loyal for better or for worse. When you have that loyalty, now you can start developing product. You can start using that communication. You can start connecting with them. 
in a reverse way, where we all together grow and develop new products, new ideas, new coffees. We study new opportunities to improve that one cup, which is, in the end, our ultimate goal. So, and in this way, you not just cultivate a brand, but you become an influence. And in order to influence, in our small experience, what we learned is that you need to be, you need to be really able to, to do your own thinking. Because if you just follow a trend, you're not doing your own thinking. So a trend is good, is good, and we've seen all this shift in trends in coffee. I'm, we've seen the coffee uh, shop market is still growing in Europe, which amazes me, because I agree to that gentleman who had that question about how many more coffee shops we can expect. Well, the question I would have, how much, how, how much more good quality we're going to have, or excellent quality, or that's the opportunity that we have to lead this in such a big market platform to the next level. So, And then for customer, uh, for building, for cultivating brand loyalty, uh, I believe there is one other thing that we have done unintentionally, or some of us have done, or we try to do. We are not saying that we're doing that all the time and we success, uh, succeeded at that. But there is a big drive and strive to get there. It's really to serve the customers instead of processing the customer or servicing the customer. I think there's a big difference just in the word. Because processing the customer is when the customer calls in, wants something done, you get the information, you hand it off to the right department, you pass it through, you clean the mailbox. But certainly, serving the customer has a whole different meaning. Serving the customer, hopefully one day, will reach out all the way to the consumers and end users around the world and create a platform for them to communicate with the factory, means, in our view, uh, deal with their issues and interests as if they were our own. It's a different concept. We're not just showing how fast we react or the sense of urgency that we have for the needs the market has, whether it's a technical issue or a logistic operational issue, but really feel that we are listening to the customers. We are listening to the need of the market. It's different. Oftentimes, we find ourselves just talking before the customer finishes to talk, or because we have such an experience in selling espresso machines around the world, we anticipate most of the questions. So we just don't even listen. We wait the customer to finish talking before we can give them that one answer where we already know what it is. Well, I think we, we have to try to learn how to listen, because the market has changed. The market, the market has changed dramatically. You've seen the artisan coffee going up. We've seen the chain accounts improving quality big times, including ambience, improving improving uh, location selection. So there are changes going on, and we got to listen to them. So I believe that in order to make a meaning uh, in this world and cultivate brand loyalty, for, at least for us, what we should be trying to do is to, is to understand the customer need. And in order to do that, we even have done something more. We have been asked by some of our reseller roasters to actually bring our artisan workers to meet their customers and users. Because they really want to know the story. They want to know about it. They want to know about this guy working with the little mirror and checking the machine, how it's calibrated. They want to understand how we make that machine, why we believe we can make a better cup of coffee. And so the value really goes from the factory floor all the way to the end users. And what a great example of cultivating brand loyalty when a guy who owns the cafe and buys that superstar coffee wants to meet the workers who actually work the, on the production line and, and do the machine. So we are sending our workers around the world now to become our ambassadors, people that really want to connect the values with the distribution chain until the people that really pay for that machine. And I have to tell you, I mean, I cannot take it for granted, but I can promise you the return on the investment financially, it's obvious. Our company has been growing double digit three years in a row in the most recession time. So uh, how do we also maintain the focus on cultivating brand loyalty? We have developed our own rule of five. What is a rule of five? Somebody once told us that if you swing an axe 
five times at a tree every day, every single day. Your birthday, you swing it. Every single day, what would eventually happen to that tree? It falls down, right? Well, hopefully. Uh, so we have a rule of five in our company that every single day, every single day, every day, every day, every day, we have to do something to support our promise, to support the brand, to connect our values to the, to the customers. Hopefully one day up to the end users. I would like to close this to show you a video that has been done by the stunning Allegra team. Once again, I'm so proud to be part of this group, and I can't thank them enough and, and congratulate and commend what they're doing to create us a platform to work, which was at the London Coffee Festival uh, last year, where we had the idea to have an actually true artisan cafe. So we realized a cafe in the show, and we exposed the culture through a rotation of several roasters from the UK, all the way up to the end user, because we wanted to find out if the end user cared about. And so we did our own cafe, temporary, in the show. And, 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 and I believe that we have connected there a lot when it comes to brand loyalty. It's all about celebrating the local community, the local coffee community. And that's what makes this event really special. And the fact that we can sit and, uh, and dialogue and work with our customers in a fun way. Yesterday we had uh, espresso martinis. This afternoon we have uh, Cafe Pascucci coming in. Uh, uh, small batch yesterday morning, spectacular espresso. It's just been great all around. Thank you for listening, listening to me speaking today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and you had, find it inspiring. Successful brands help people towards their ultimate goal of self-actualization and total fulfillment. People have to identify with the brand. And this is one of the examples of branding that we have been able to enjoy in our small world. Thank you very much.